Is Ghana becoming the next Silicon Valley? And it is possible that one of the biggest tech revolution in Africa will begin not in Nairobi or Lagos, but in a quiet district called Ningo Pram Pram in Ghana. On May 29, 2025, Ghana and the United Arab Emirates signed a $1 billion deal to build what will become Africa's largest innovation hub. Probably one of the biggest investments that's going to happen over the next 24 months in Ghana. It is a partnership between Ghana and the United Arab Emirates, led by PCFC um, and G42. G42 is one of the leading AI firms in the world. They've led in the transformation of Dubai's AI ecosystem. But the partnership with PCFC is to be able to create this hub. PCFC currently holds over 11 such hubs in Dubai. They're investing, they're looking to invest by a billion dollars in Ghana to build an innovation hub. And for us, as President Mahama's vision of transforming Ghana into the next AI hub for Africa, we need to begin to think about the various phases of the, of the plan. This project could redefine Ghana's economy, change the story of African innovation, and possibly offer the continent a new kind of independence, one built on data, software, and artificial intelligence. This is more than just another tech project. The Ghana UAE Innovation and Technology Hub could shift Africa's position in the global digital economy. 25 square kilometers of land in Nigo Pram Pram will become a launch pad for over 11,000 companies, including some of the biggest names in tech like Microsoft, Meta, Oracle, Alphabet. Companies that once focused only on the US, Europe, and part of Asia are now turning to Ghana. But why Ghana and why now? Let's break it down. Africans' digital economy is growing fast. According to the World Bank, it's expected to add $180 billion to Africans' GDP by the year 2025. Ghana alone has seen a surge in young developers, startups, and data scientists. But there is a gap. Many African countries still rely heavily on imported softwares, cloud services, and digital infrastructure from the West or China. The UAE Ghana Hub is designed to change that. It will serve as a regional base for artificial intelligence, AI, business process outsourcing, knowledge process outsourcing, machine learning platforms, and understanding local dialect, economies, and user behavior. Think of it like Africans' version of Silicon Valley. When Silicon Valley was born in California, it was driven by two things, big investments and big vision. Howlett Packard, popularly known as HP, started in garage. So did Apple. Now, the valley adds over $275 billion to the U.S. economy each and every year. If Ghana get this right, the ripple effect could be massive. Youth employment, export-ready tech products, data sovereignty, all based in West Africa. Rare example is in Rwanda. Drone company Zipline uses AI to deliver blood and vaccines to remote villages. In Kenya, M-Pesa revolutionized mobile money. So this hub could scale this kind of innovations across the entire continent. So why is the UAE involved? Well, the answer is long-term vision. The UAE doesn't build skyscrapers anymore. It builds influence. Over the past decade, Dubai has turned itself into a global trade and tech sector center. It hosts Gitex, one of the biggest tech expos in the world, and it has done it by being strategic. Instead of just giving loans or aid, the UAE is now investing in infrastructure, innovation, and skills. The UAE's port, customs, and free zone corporation, PCFC, the same body that manages DP World, will fund the first phase of Ghana's hub. This isn't a grant, it is a calculated investment. In fact, the chairman of the PCFC, Sultan Ahmed bin Sulayem, said something powerful during the signing. He said, wealth is not measured by gold or oil anymore. It is measured by your ability to generate and scale ideas. That is why they built one of the world's most advanced automated ports in Rotterdam, which runs almost entirely on AI. The same logic is being brought to Ghana. And here is what makes this deal different from many flashy announcements we've been seeing across Africa. The UAE doesn't make promise and walk away. DP World runs ports across Africa already, from Dakar to Mobutu. They have experience, capital, and logistic expertise. 
What Ghana is offering here is the land, the youth, the creativity, and the political commitment. The signing wasn't just symbolic, it was detailed, structured, and backed by real actors in the tech ecosystem. One of the most exciting parts of the deal is Luca Impact. The innovation hub aligned with Ghana's 1 million coders program, a national plan to train youth in AI, cybersecurity, and data governance. This isn't just about employment, it's about nation building. Instead of outsourcing Ghana's digital future to Silicon Valley, the goal is to create a digital economy led by Ghanaians for Ghanaians. This is essential because across Africa, there is a paradox, the youngest population in the world but the lowest share of global digital output. This project begin to fix that 11,000 companies potentially involved thousands of jobs in software design data ai support an innovation park that could attract talent from nigeria senegal Côte d'Ivoire, and beyond if even 5% of the companies moving in are successful startups, Ghana could create a self-sustaining tech ecosystem within 10 years. Think about what this means for young people in Ghana. Students in Accra or Tamale no longer has to dream about working for Google in California. They could work for Google in Ningu Pram Pram. And for us, as President Mahama's vision of transforming Ghana into the next AI hub for Africa, we need to begin to think about the various phases of the, of the plan. So we've started the One Million Coders program. As you train a million coders, you need to have jobs for those coders. Now, how do you attract the jobs? And that's where PCFC comes in. PCFC currently operates with all the big 10 top tech companies in the world. Microsoft, Oracle, IBM, Meta, Alphabet. And so having the innovation hub built here in Ghana by PCFC, they come along with the over 11,000 companies that are under their umbrella in the United Arab Emirates to have a Ghanaian presence. And you heard them, they are, they, they, PCFC is part of the DP world, which is Dubai Port World. So basically they are, they are a logistics company. And because they're a logistics company, they, they, they serve currently over 11,000 clients, big conglomerates. Now these conglomerates have their items or goods and services in Africa, but they don't have a hub in on the continent. So Ghana being the gateway to Africa, we, we reached out to them. The ambassador was very helpful, His Excellency Almandas, and that's why we're setting up this innovation hub. So it's gonna be a place that's gonna attract all the big top tech companies in here. So our BPO, business process outsourcing, knowledge process outsourcing, AI engineering, all of those new emerging technology fields, you're gonna have them positioned here in Africa. Because don't forget, as President Mahama rolls out his vision of transforming Ghana and positioning it on the ecosystem, we are awake to the fact that most of the AI tools ex existing today do not have African data sets to teach the machine for the machine learning. And that's what this hub is going to become. It's going to become the hub of excellence for machine for data sets to be generated for machine learning for Africa centric. AI tools. This hub is not just a place, it's a statement. It says Ghana's time has come. But as always, execution is everything. Will Ghana invest in the right infrastructure? Will the education system adapt quickly enough? Will local businesses get the support they need to thrive in a global market? These are questions we need to keep asking because the stakes are high. The Ghana UAE Innovation Hub is more than a tech park. It is a bridge between continents, between generations, and between what Ghana is and what it could become. In the 1990s, India wasn't a tech powerhouse. Today, it dominates the software outsourcing industry, generating over 200 billion annually. In 2025, Ghana is making its move. This deal might not grab global headlines yet, but 10 years from now, when African digital future is being written, this moment could be remembered as the starting point. The only question is, will Ghana rise to the occasion? And that is all for today's episode. If you find this video insightful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more of such videos. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Sheriff Haruna, reporting for AS1 News. Have a joyful life and see you in the next one. Macrao.